finally, let's zoom out and look how the uh, ATP synthase and more general uh, oxidative phosphorylation system is embedded into the context of cellular metabolism. Regarding uh, the ATP synthase, uh, the uh, problem, topological problem, which uh, remains is that uh, the during catalysis, the ATP synthase synthase synthesize sorry ATP in the mitochondrial matrix, and uh, at the end, the measure point where ATP is consumed and required is uh, outside of the mitochondrial matrix cell cytosol. Uh, at the end, the uh, mitochondria are considered as power plants of the cell producing bulk ATP. Uh, on the other hand, the, uh, the ATP is consumed mostly in cytosol and uh, provides the substrate of uh, ATP synthase in the form of ATP and uh, inorganic phosphate in the form, in, in, in the cytosolic compartment, while it is required for ATP synthase in the mitochondrial matrix. So the question is how the uh, uh, ATP synthase is fueled and how uh, products of uh, its action ATP is uh, transported back to its uh, final destination, cytosol. Uh, in fact, this is happening uh, by the action of uh, two uh, uh, transmembrane uh, transport channels, one of which um, uh, phosphate translocates, which uh, uh, job is to uh, translocate the one of the uh, substrates for ATP synthesis in organic phosphate from cytosol into the matrix, and another one is the um, the nucleotide translocase, which is uh, um, uh, classified as antiporter, it is uh, coupling the uh, translocation of uh, final product of ATP synthase ATP from the uh, matrix to the uh, cytosolic part to the opposite direction transport of the substrate of uh, um, ATP synthase ADP from the cytosol to mitochondrial matrix. So how this uh, system can be made directional, how it can uh, pump efficiently the uh, substrates into the matrix and export the final products in the site as well. And uh, the uh, answer is that it is empowered by the same electrochemical gradient as power the ATP synthase. To be more specific, the uh, phosphate uh, Translocase is symporter that uh, couples the um, uh, transport of inorganic phosphate into the matrix with the simultaneous transport of proton, uh, thus releasing the generated proton gradient. And if you look closer at this event, the uh, uh, inorganic phosphate is a singly negatively charged molecule. So it means that basically the uh, free energy must be uh, consumed to uh, uh, overcome the uh, uh, the the um, uh, uh, electric difference in electric potential, which was generated by this disproportionation of charge. So it, it has to pump it against the electric field. Uh, however. Uh, if you note that this is symporter and this transport is coupled with simultaneous transport of proton, uh, which uh, very well compensates for the uh, free energy input required to uh, transport the inorganic phosphate against the electric field. Uh, at the same time, when transporting protons, we uh, transfer protons along the uh, chemical gradient uh, generated due to proton concentration. So in total, this event of transport will be energetically favorable, uh, where electric uh, part of the electrochemical gradient will be compensated because two charges are transported at the same time. While uh, at the same time, we release uh, some chemical gradient uh, due to this of proton concentration. So this 
pumping event is energetically fireable. At the same time, if we consider the anti antiporter event, uh, transporting backwards um, uh, ATP and inwards the ADP, we need to consider that the uh, ATP uh, at the uh, normal pHs is a quadruply negatively charged molecule, while a ADP is triply negatively charged. So, in total, we uh, transfer more uh, negative charge along the uh, electric gradient as compared to the, uh, the amount of negative negative charge trans transferred against the electric uh, potential gradient. So, in total, this antiporter event is also an energetic fireball. This way, the combination of uh, the uh, phosphate tra translocase symporter and uh, the nucleotide uh, translocase antiporter uh, produ produces uh, energy favorable system that efficiently pumps both the uh, substrates ADP and um, inorganic phosphate from cytosol into the matrix and at the same time uh, efficiently exports the final product of ATP synthase in the cytosol and this system is ran by uh, releasing part of the uh, proton electrochemical gradient generated by the electron transport system. <clears throat> but if you zoom out further, we shall consider that the uh, uh, ATP synthase uh, and uh, the uh, respiratory chain and more generally the city phosphorylation system is embedded in the context of uh, wholesale metabolism and its uh, major role uh, in uh, 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 in providing uh, energy to a cell must be co coordinated within other cellular processes to uh, maintain energy homeostasis so there must be a way how the uh, function of the phosphorylation system is uh, regulated uh, uh, at, at, at different levels to, to be in sync with the uh, requirement for cell energy needs. And there are uh, several ways of uh, how the phosphorylation system is regulated. First and straightforward, most straightforward way is the substrate availability. The um, normally in a cell, the uh, almost all uh, uh, the uh, adenosine nucleosides are present in the triphosphorylated form in form of ATP. So, in this very little uh, ADP which is uh, available in the cell, and this generates a rate limiting step that uh, limits the uh, production of uh, uh, ATP by uh, ATP synthase. Uh, and the uh, true substrate availability, the um, rate of uh, uh, the uh, oxidative phosphorylation and uh, the energy production can be uh, regulated over a wide range, uh, ranging approximately tenfold. Uh, uh, another way is the uh, uh, rate of the uh, uh, Electrons feed into the uh, the um, respiratory chain, which is regulated on every level at many steps of the uh, catabolic process, leading to the uh, production of the uh, reduced electron carriers that are fed into the um, respiratory chain. Uh, we did touch upon this uh, when talked about. Uh, the uh, regulation of uh, glycolytic pathway or regulation of citric acid cycle, where we uh, did discuss how the uh, regulated steps and regulatory enzymes are regulated. If one would um, look uh, from make an overview of, uh, from what is uh, up regulated, what is down regulated, uh, down regulated, these uh, key steps, you would see that uh, many of the regulators. Uh, which uh, down regulate the uh, flux through these pathways are indicators of the uh, energy availability or uh, saturation of the steps uh, which are closer to the respiratory chain. And for example, we could see that almost on, on every catabolic level, the uh, steps, uh, catabolic steps are inhibited uh, by uh, the um, 
ATP, which uh, makes sense because it signals the uh, the uh, the saturation of energy generating pathway, uh, indicating that the uh, cell have uh, plenty of ATP and there is no more need to generate more. Uh, so likewise, um, many of the upstream steps in in this uh, uh, catabolic road are down regulated by the electron carrier availability and the dh which is transfer which is the substrate of the um, respiratory chain indicating that the respiratory chain is not able to consume enough uh, nadh and therefore previous steps shall be inhibited uh, on the opposite side many of the steps are upregulated by the inorganic phosphate ADP or AMP uh, indicating that uh, the cells does not uh, reach optimal ratio of uh, uh, ATP to ADP uh, uh, which are uh, on par with the uh, healthy energy status. Lastly, uh, there are uh, also emergency conditions where the uh, uh, the last part of the oxidative phosphorylation system ATP synthase have to be, has to be put to halt and these conditions are reached usually at the, um, uh, at the conditions of uh, hypoxic stress. In this case the uh, when uh, ATP, ATP level uh, ATP level drop drop down the uh, uh, respiratory chain cannot uh, provide adequate uh, gradient of proton concentration across the inner mitochondrial membrane in this way the uh, upon a certain threshold drop in the uh, the electrochemical potential it becomes more favorable for ATP synthase to uh, uh, hydrolyze ATP rest than uh, generate ATP from proton gradient which is the same thermodynamic process but um, uh, uh, but uh, but uh, but pr proceeding in reverse as every thermodynamic process, and this, uh, if it's not inhibited, would uh, just burn the remnants of ATP produced in the cell. Uh, in the hypo hypoxic condition, cell is uh, um, have a tendency to switch to glycolytic pathway to to produce ATP. Uh, uh, in our cells, this lactate fermentation, which we discussed uh, uh, in a lecture regarding glycolysis, and to uh, couple uh, to, to to definitely mitigate these conditions where ATP could be drained out um, uh, by the uh, just inability to form the electrochemical gradient, the cell uh, uh, have uh, the uh, precaution step where uh, the ATP synthase is inhibited by a protein, um, the F1 subunit inhibitor, which is a protein that reacts to the lowering of pH during the uh, intense uh, uh, lactate fermentation in the cell. Uh, there is a lot of lactate produced, which uh, lowers pH of cell cytosol, and this pH uh, drop is triggering the association of this F1 inhibitor protein with the um, uh, ATP synthase complex thus blocking the rotation of the um, F1 unit such that basically it, is, it, it cannot any longer rotate and uh, drain ATP backwards. Uh, so there are many many other uh, levels at which uh, the oxidative phosphorylation system is, is regulated but this is a general overview of the most uh, uh, pronounced ways and this concludes our discussion about the uh, function of the oxidative phosphorylation system.